Google Analytics is one of these tools that everyone or almost everyone dislikes but we must use because it's very good and it gives us data and reports that Shopify dashboard doesn't. In today's video, I'm going to try to simplify Google Analytics for you and show you the most important reports and metrics that you should be looking at in Google Analytics. I know the platform is not user friendly at all. I don't like it as well, but in this video, I will try to simplify it as much as possible so you can understand how to use it and you can understand how you can read the data in there in order to make more informed decisions that will help you to increase your sales and make more money. So let's get started. So here I am inside of Google Analytics 4. And the first thing you are going to see on in the home screen are some data that Google Analytics think are the most important for you and for your business based on the type of business you are running and so on. Since we are into e-commerce, so this dashboard is most probably showing metrics related to e-commerce. I don't usually spend a lot of time in here, but you can always look in here to have like an overview of your business and how things are going. So for example, in here, I am checking the results for the last 60 days. You can change this to any window you want, so you can choose up to last 12 months and so on. And in here, the first uh, graph we are seeing are the active users. And you can change what you want to see in here and choose between these options. So if you are into e-commerce, you might go in here and choose to see any of these metrics. As I told you before, I don't spend a lot of time in here because most of these data in here are things that I can find on Shopify. So I don't spend a lot of time in here. So. If you scroll down, you will find some more information about your store, like some things like this, but we are going to discuss all of this later. Uh, there is something in here that I want you to check out and it's this tool in here and it's called Insights. It helps you a lot, especially if you are just starting out with Google Analytics and if you are searching for like quick answers for common questions. So you go in here and you click on suggested questions and you will see a list of questions that you can ask the AI of Google Analytics to answer uh, to. So for example, I can go to demographics and ask, for example, about what countries do my users come from? So they provide a quick answer to my question and I can see in here like the top countries. The number of questions you will find in here is limited and it's predefined by Google Analytics, but it's a, it's a nice tool if you want to get like some quick answers. I always use it if I'm looking for a very quick answer. Okay, after the dashboard in here, you have from the left your sidebar and this is where you are going to spend most of your time. So you have reports, explore and advertising. And if you are running Google Ads, I highly recommend you to link your Google Analytics to your Google Ads, your Shopify store and you can do all of this using the Shopify integration, it's quite simple. Um, if you are doing Google Ads, you will see some of the results in here, so you will have an idea about your results also in here. Okay, let's go first to the reports section and depending on if you have ever touched this sidebar or not, you might see different things in here and you can modify what you are seeing in here if you want, but I like to keep it as it is. So let's start first by reports and this is where I recommend you to spend a lot of your time. And as you can see in here, you will find your report divided between business objectives, life cycle, search council and user. And if you click on library in here, this is where you can decide how you are going to choose your uh, dashboard view. So you can, for example, add elements in here or remove elements from here. Again, I like to keep it as it is. I think it's fine. It's not distracting to me or anything. Now let's start talking about the first report that you should be looking at. From your Google Analytics dashboard, you go in here to reports and I want you to go to the life cycle report section. Okay, and from there, I want you to go to traffic acquisition. This report is very important because it will give you a lot of data concerning the traffic you are receiving and from where you are receiving this traffic. Okay, first in here, you can define like the window, the time window that you want to see. So for example, I'm seeing the last 28 days and in here I can change the graph view whether I want to see daily or weekly or monthly. And as you can see in here, I'm seeing my different traffic and what I'm seeing, I'm seeing the sessions by session primary channel group. So I'm seeing like how much I've received as organic search, cross network, paid advertising and so on. And you can see in this graph in here like the same view and in here you have the same data but in different type of charts. 
if you scroll down in here you will have your full report and as you can see in here you have the different like primary sources of traffic and in here you have data related to this traffic why this report is important because this type of data doesn't exist on Shopify with this much details so in here I can see for example that I'm receiving a lot of traffic coming from organic search and this is super important for any e-commerce business and in here you can know more about each type of your let's say traffic and how this traffic is interacting and engaging with your business and when you hover over any of these metrics you will read what each of these metrics means so for example the engaged sessions is a metric that tells you uh, the number of sessions that lasted longer than 10 seconds if someone spends more than 10 seconds on a page it means that this page was interesting for them so what they are searching for was in parallel of what they have found on this page which is a very good thing so for example if you have a very low number of engaged sessions on the organic search this is a bad sign because it means like so many people are searching for something and they are landing on your page but they are not like finding what they have searched for or your page is not 100% related or relevant to what they have searched for. If you scroll, you will find more and more metrics and all of these metrics are important. But you can also improve this report more by in here deciding to also see the medium. By doing this, you will know more about your traffic. So for example, in here, I can know the amount of traffic I received from my CPC campaigns, from paid on Facebook and so on. This is like gives you a second level of uh, knowledge when it comes to the traffic. So for example, in here, this is my OmniSend email marketing traffic. This is what I have received last month. And it gives me data about each of my traffic uh, channels and traffic mediums. Okay. If you want to change this table to add more metrics in here, all you need to do is to click on customize report and you can go in here and under metrics, add more metrics. Okay. It depends on you. I have changed a little bit this table, added some metrics that mean a lot to me. So for example, I like to know the conversion rate by traffic channel. So I added this metric, which is the session key event rate, but you need to take care of something in here, but in here you need to uh, know something. Key events on Google Analytics are not only purchase events. That's why you need in here to go and to choose purchase. So by doing this, for example, I know that my overall conversion rate is 1.7 and I can see my conversion rate by uh, traffic channel. This is going to be super useful if you want to check the uh, conversion rate of a certain product page or a certain collection page. And this is going to be super important if you are looking to know the conversion rate of a specific product page. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a few minutes. So again, you can modify everything about this report and save it. I think it's very important to spend uh, some time in here figuring out if your customers are engaging with your, with your pages, if they are spending enough time on your pages to make sure that you are receiving and you are driving relevant traffic to your store. As you can see in this report, I have sessions. I have the number of engaged sessions. I have the engagement rate, which gives me an idea about like, how much people are engaging with my uh, pages, which is super important to me. And I have average engagement time. This is gonna give me an idea about how much time people spend on my pages, and it's also very important. Then I have the number of events or the average number of events per session. And again, events doesn't mean only purchases, it's a list of events. And then here I have, in the, I have the event count. And as you can see, if you click on all events, you can filter by the event type and you can see that there are so many events happening in here. You need to choose what events mean the most to you. So are you, do you want to check the number of add to cards, the number of purchases and so on. So you can filter and check from here. Then you have key events. Then you have like the session key event rate, which is the one we talked about. And we have the total revenue. Again, you can change all of these like metrics in the way that makes more sense to you in order to read your data in the best way possible. But if you want to change it, you just need to click here on customize report and you go in here to metrics and you can choose what metrics you want to add and you just click on apply. Now, the second report I need to look at, it's your landing pages report. And this report is going to figure out the conversion rates of specific pages on your store. I personally find this is super important because I want to know if one of my product pages is performing better than others, especially if I have different layouts or different setups. So from your Google Analytics dashboard, you go to reports 
and from there you go to acquisition and this time under engagement you go to landing pages and as you can see in here you will have a list of landing pages on your store plus some metrics that will tell you about your traffic performance or your visitors performance on these pages well the metric that i like to add and it's not there by default is the key event rate because i want to know again the conversion rate per product page so i have added this metric by clicking in here and going to the editor dashboard and i just need here to filter to see purchase like i have told you before it's very important to filter by purchase and this way i can see if one of my product pages for example is performing better than other products pages so now i can know the conversion rate of each of my product pages specifically my top product pages and I can compare with them and see if one page is performing way better or maybe way worse than others. Okay, this is a very important metric and you can't find it on Shopify Analytics. So when you look at this table in here, you can notice, for example, that I have very high conversion rates for these two products compared to this one, for example. So either I'm driving the wrong traffic for this product page, or maybe this product page needs more work, or maybe this product is not as appealing as the others. I need to analyze my numbers and see what's happening in order to understand why my customers are not buying this product as frequent as they are buying the other products. The next report I want you to look at, and it's actually very beneficial for e-commerce brands, it's under monetization in here and under purchase journey. This report is very nice because it's going to tell you about how your customers are navigating your stores, what events they are making, what actions they are making, and it will give you an idea about what might be the problem if you want to increase your sales this is a report that you must check so first in here we have the number of sessions started and as you can see in this graph we can see like the journey of your customers so for example in the last 30 days in here we have received almost 10k like sessions but only 53 percent of them viewed a product and then after this only 9.2% of these people actually added to cart. Then we have like 63% of these people actually began checkout and 50% of them purchased. Why this is important? Because looking at this graph, you can see what's happening with your customers, how they are moving from one step to another. So for example, if you noticed a huge drop between your add to cart and the checkout, maybe there is a problem in there. Maybe there is a problem with your cart page. If you are noticing a big, a big drop, for example, between checkout and purchase, this is also a very important thing to look at. Maybe it's happening because your shipping rates are very for example high or maybe your checkout page is not trustworthy or there is something wrong in the checkout process look at this report and try to understand it and try to use it in order to see if there is something wrong happening on your store and how you can improve your customer's journey it's very important to note one thing this drop between like session started and the viewed product is normal the drops that are scary are mainly between add to cards checkout and purchases but again in here you can improve a lot so if you are noticing that many people like they are they are visiting the website but they are not checking products you need to ask yourself what's happening maybe your collections are not very clear maybe they are not easily finding what they are searching for maybe you need to improve your search bar and so on so this report is going to tell you a lot and it's a very important report that you must check in addition to the reports I have showed you, there are so many other reports in Google Analytics that are super important and that you can explore. But I tried to mention or point out the most important reports and the ones that you can't find in Shopify. If you go to your Shopify Analytics dashboard from the left, I highly recommend you to check out all the different reports under the life cycle. All of them are important and all of them will give you a lot of data and a lot of knowledge about your traffic and your store. One additional report that I usually like to explore, for example, is the e-commerce purchases. So I like to know, for example, more about my products, how much purchases I've made out of each product, how the customers behaved, and so on. Again, there are so many reports in here that you can explore, and I highly recommend you to spend some time on Google Analytics to get more familiar with it in order to be able to use it to increase your sales and improve your business. I hope that this video will help you to know more about Google Analytics and how to use it.
If you are into matrix and you like to make a lot of informed decisions when it comes to your business, and this is actually something amazing, I highly recommend you to check this video on my YouTube channel where I talk about three metrics that you should never miss. These metrics are super important and they will greatly help you to improve your business and to take the right actions toward making more money and more sales. So check it out.